Hey everyone, it's Neil Patel, and this is another week of e-commerce unlocked. Today, we're gonna to be covering shopping and product campaigns. In other words, I'm gonna teach you how to run ads so you can drive sales to your website profitably. Now, in the past few weeks, we've covered everything from the basics of e-commerce and getting started to SEO and CRO. Then we even dove into sales channels, and now we're getting into marketing channels. There's three main marketing channels that you can use that'll give you quick traction. It's Google Ads, Bing ads and Facebook advertising. With Google advertising, think of it this way. You already know that when you go on Google, you type in any keyword, you'll see ads at the top and then organic listings. But they also have a lot of product ads. And in many cases, depending on what you're looking for, they'll show you the products that are right for you so that way you can find them and then buy them. So with your e-commerce site, you can leverage them to drive more sales to it. What I want you to first do is to go and set up your first PLA campaign. So go to the Merchant Center and set up your account. It walks you through how to do it step by step. You'll find the URL on the screen. And once you do that, that's the first step and that'll help you get off into the races. Now we're gonna be using this a little bit later on and I'll show you how and I'll walk you through it step by step. But first off, I want you to go through each of the three steps in order. When you're running campaigns through Google, you can structure campaigns in many different ways. You can categorize them based on product line, regions that you're targeting, the options are endless. Just make sure you try to keep things in an organized fashion because eventually you're gonna keep going back, tweaking and fine tuning them so that way your products, your ads are driving the most amount of sales to your products. So let's get started by setting up Google Shopping Ads. Now I know we talked about Merchant Center a little bit ago, but don't worry, it'll connect within your Google Shopping Ads. So first, go to Google Ads, click Start Now, and then select the option Get More Website Sales or Signups. I know that you're doing e-commerce, there are options specific for you, and we'll get to that in a bit. Once you sign up, you wanna put in your business website, click Next. From there, pick the locations that you're targeting. It could be a city. In most cases with e-commerce, you're gonna pick a country. Uh, you can exclude regions like Hawaii and Alaska or other parts of the world if you don't wanna to ship to them. So pick the regions that you wanna target. Put in the keywords that you think are relevant to your products that you're selling. If you're not sure how to find them, go to ubersuggest.com and put in keywords related to your product or you know what your competition is using. Or heck, you can even put in your competition's website URL and it'll show you all the keywords that they rank for. You would see keywords, You know, let's say you put in a keyword into Ubersuggest. In the left navigation, when you click on keyword ideas, it'll give you tons of suggestions. The ones with a high volume and a high CPC tend to be the better ones. A high CPC means cost per click. If people are willing to pay more money per click, it means that it tends to convert better. If you wanna see what keywords your competitors are going after, you just put in your competitor URL, and then in the left-hand navigation, you'll see a heading called Traffic Analyzer. Underneath that, you'll see a listing or an option called Keywords. Click on that, and it'll show you all the keywords that your competition is going after. So now that you got keywords, you know that'll help you get off into races, it's time to select your budget. So don't worry about what budget you select for now, just click custom, select any amount, and then click next, because what we're gonna do is we're gonna pause your campaign, because once you selected your budget, I want you to go to campaign settings on the left side, go to your campaign name, and click on pause. The reason you wanna pause it is we're not ready to spend money. We still have more things that we have to go through. Because remember, this is all about selling e-commerce goods, and I told you that we're gonna get very specific to e-commerce. So I want you, with your Google Ads, uh, to go to the display campaigns and then click on the plus sign to make a new campaign. After that, click on sales. Once you select shopping, I want you to select the Merchant Center account that we made earlier, and then of course, click continue. From there, click on standard shopping campaign. This tends to provide a better ROI when you're starting off, but of course, later on, you're gonna to wanna to expand to smart shopping when it makes sense, but for now, just select standard shopping campaign. I want you to disable enhance CPC. CPC stands for cost per click. Set your budget to $10 and then set the location and hit save. Again, I mentioned this earlier, if you don't ship to certain regions like Alaska or Hawaii, you can change this and exclude those when you're selecting your location or country. When selecting your bid, 
I suggest you start off at a dollar just for testing purposes. Of course, you'll want to adjust and tweak it later on, but hey, we're just getting the campaign up, we're trying to get some sales, and then we'll tweak it for growth and profitability. You'll also want to link your accounts. So I want you to head over to Google Merchant Center, click on the tools icon, and then on the linked accounts. And this will ensure everything is linked up. When you click the link button, it'll all be tied in together, and then you'll be off into the races. At this point, you'll start seeing some of the sales roll in. It may take a bit because you're not spending much, but over time, you'll start seeing your numbers increase. And then from there, you can start adjusting quite a few things. You may wanna end up spending more per click, less per click, but this should just help you get started and get you off into the races. You also wanna start testing products. You can test your best products with shopping ads that are naturally higher in conversion rates. You can choose your best sellers and the ones that aren't doing well and haven't performed well on your e-commerce site in the past, you don't really want to push them too hard because the chances are they're not going to convert as well or work as well for you. Here's some additional tweaks that you can make to your campaign to get a little bit more ROI, and this will help get you a jump start. I want you to click on Add Extensions, so you can see in the left-hand navigation, and then start considering doing things like promotions, site links, and start adjusting some of these things because if you're calling out some of your products and making them stand out, it does help drive more sales as well. One of my favorite approaches, and this is one of the easiest ones, is just setting up a remarketing campaign. Have you ever noticed you'll go to a website, let's say you're trying to buy a mattress for your bed, and you don't buy, but you start browsing other news websites and just other random sites, but you'll start seeing mattress ads follow you around the web from that same company. It's because they're remarketing you. And setting up remarketing campaigns is a great way to also generate more sales because most of the people that land on your website won't end up buying from you right away. And the URL that I have on the screen will teach you how to get set up with remarketing. What's beautiful is when you go into your audience and you want to add audiences, you can start adding people that have been to your website, specifically your checkout page. They're super close to buying, but didn't get to the thank you page because that means they didn't complete it. And first start by targeting those people. As I mentioned, it's one of the best ad types that you can run, and it tends to have one of the highest ROI. So I definitely recommend setting that up. Now that you have Google set up, it's time to get your Bing product ads up as well. And the beautiful part is because you got Google up, you can just import them into Bing and get a head start without going through all the tedious steps. So once you log into your Bing ads, I want you to click on tools, then click on import, and then click on sign in to Google. By doing this, what you'll find is it'll start importing everything that you have from your merchant center from Google into Bing, and that way you can get set up without having to do all the steps step by step. If you're also on Shopify, there's also a Bing feed on Shopify. There's actually a ton of apps that you can end up choosing from. Some are paid, some are free, um, but you know, try them out, see which ones you like, and that'll help speed things up as well. As I mentioned, some are paid, some are free. Uh, for this lesson, we use this one, Google Shopping feed ads and you can end up managing your Google Shopping, Bing, Facebook, Instagram, and all the feed ads. Install the app, once you install it, you're off into the races. Uh, you can end up creating campaigns, and by starting them off, as you release more and more products, you can end up pushing more and more on your ads. Uh, and as you have less and less inventory, you can start turning down the ads on the products that you're running out of stock on. Some best practice for you, Fill in all the fields in order for Bing to surface the most relevant products. Change and update your feed at least every 30 days. I like doing it weekly, but if you don't have the time once every 30 days at least, again, try to strive for weekly. Describe your products that are most relevant, and this is where you want to use Ubersuggest. Are people typing in water cooler more or icebox? If you're selling an icebox or a water cooler, even though they're pretty much the same thing, you want to go to Uber Suggest and see which one's more popular because that'll tell you what people are searching for. And that'll give you an idea of what you should call your products and the text you should use on your own landing pages as well. And you want to keep your product ads separate from text campaigns so that way you can see how well they're performing. 
There's a lot of different campaign types that you can also use. You can use ones that are pretty much for all your products or for specific categories or types or just your brand. Um, these are all things that you can end up testing out or if you're selling other people's brand, depending on if they've trademarked it and allowed bidding on it, you can potentially advertise on them as well. Now for Facebook dynamic product ads. It's another amazing channel. A lot of people in e-commerce use Facebook. They make it really easy to set up. Uh, and the beautiful part about Facebook is it's not just Facebook that you can generate quite a bit of sales from. It's also Instagram. It's super powerful. We're seeing on our end more sales from e-commerce typically through Instagram than we are from Facebook. Now it does vary from business to business. Some of them, they're seeing many more sales from Facebook, but nonetheless, they're all owned by Facebook and they're all worth trying out. So again, log into Facebook in your business manager, go to assets, then go to catalogs and then add your product feed. Choose to upload your product feed or connect your e-commerce platform. Like if you're using Shopify, you can just straight up connect into it. And then you would want to go over to the next step, which is to choose your catalog sales. Uh, and then you want to choose the relevant product option. Pick the target audience that's most relevant to your offer and then start with the reasonable budget or bid. Don't start too high. Start small. If you're not getting much traction, you can always increase. You don't want to start too high. You want to start low and then increase. Don't go the other way around. The key to profitability when you're running ads is a few things. One, you want to be leveraging live chat. You'll find that you get a lot of sales because people have tons of questions. The other thing you want to do is use heat maps. Uh, you can use crazy egg for this. It shows you where people click, where they get stuck. You can even run AB tests over time and continually improve your product. You can actually do all that in crazy egg. You want to log your observations, create a hypothesis, all using data. And of course, this will help you get and run more and more experiments. And when you're running the experiments, I have an AB testing calculator on neilpatel.com. You can plug in your conversions and your visitors to each variation, and it'll tell you which one converts better than the other. So that way you can maximize your sales. And of course, you're gonna get a lot of people to abandon your checkout process. You can start using ways to get them back, such as emailing them, using push notifications. There's a lot of options for you, but optimizing your abandoned sequence, like your emails and your push notification, in general should be able to increase your sales by 10%. You wanna go for what has the best profit and is the easiest and low hanging fruit, and this is where a lot of opportunity is for a ton of e-commerce sites. And remember, you're not optimizing for price points, you're optimizing for profitability. So now I want you to go to neilpatel.com slash training, click on e-commerce unlocked, go to week four, the first lesson, and I want you to download the ad audit checklist. In addition to that, go through the essentials for Google, Bing, and of course, Facebook. I have those sheets there for you as well to download at neilpatel.com slash training. Click on e-commerce unlocked and then week four, the first lesson. Thank you very much and I look forward to helping you grow your e-commerce traffic.